What's going on everybody? This is Invader and I'm back at it with another video. So, a few days ago Sony revealed the price for the PlayStation VR. The base of the unit sits at around 399 US. That includes earbuds and the cables required to use it. However, it will not be bundled with the PlayStation Move controllers or the PlayStation camera, which costs about $70-ish. In a way, this makes sense as some more hardcore PlayStation fans would already have these items. However, I find it odd that Sony wouldn't have a complete bundle with all the add-ons needed to make it work. It seems just very off-putting to me, and I'm sure many consumers would be baffled who just bring it home and the headset just doesn't work. Now, as far as the games go for VR, it's <laughs> quantity versus quality. Uh, they are mostly just a collection of mini-games or glorified tech demos. However, rigs developed by Gorilla Cambridge did catch my eye. It's mechanized combat meets sporting events stadium atmosphere. It just seems kind of fun to me. The PlayStation VR is supposed to have around 50 games within the first two months, so hopefully something substantial software-wise will be released for it. Now, I'll admit that I'm not big on peripherals. They usually only serve a single purpose for a single game. Plus, I don't like clutter around my space. That was one of the reasons why I liked the Kinect so much. It just sat on top of my TV and it wasn't in the way. But hey, that's just my thing. I know others have boatloads more fun with that kind of added stuff. One of my gripes though is that there's just too many wires with the PlayStation VR. If you're going to be maneuvering around your living room or whatever space, uh, the device is just, just going to have uh, wires streaming down your back. It seems clunky and intrusive. Not only that, but there's also warnings about nausea while using it and recommendations for children under 12 to not to use it. You know, this is just something that you're only going to be using for limited amounts of time. Also, while it may sit at $399 in the US, I know it's going to be a tough pill for me to swallow at about $550 Canadian. And that's just the base alone. Now, hey, I, I get it. Gaming is expensive as it is. Believe me, I get it. But when it costs more than the console itself, you need to step aside and consider what good it's going to do you besides just a few quick games. Not only that, but you're probably going to want to invest in some better headphones as well. So all in all, I'd be putting roughly $700 into this thing just to enjoy a few closed off experiences. And this, I might add, is supposed to be a cheaper virtual reality experience. Cheaper! And look, I'm really not trying to bash on it. I'm still looking into it, and I genuinely hope the technology does pull through and give us something worthwhile. It's just, you know, if you want to try it out, by all means, go for it. Just that in the present state, I don't know yet. I don't think we're at that point where we can produce the experiences that we want with it yet. Either way, VR seems here to stay for the time being, with not only Sony, but also the highly touted Oculus Rift, some Samsung VR gear, HTC Vive, and so on. It just, it seems like it's gonna be a, a thing for now. Well, anyways guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate the support and feedback you give. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Ciao for now, and see ya! Good luck. You're on top. Rock and roll.